Hi everyone, this is Abdul from Pythonist. I hope you are doing great. In our previous video, we have talked about the clustering, what it is, why clustering is so useful, and I also discussed some important things to consider while you are switching from multi-processing solutions to clustering. If you didn't watch that video, I recommend you to watch that first to understand the basic concepts of clustering. I will post the link in the description below. Now, in this video, we are going to explore two different methods to implement clustering in your Python projects. Let's get started. The very first option is the Parallel Python. Parallel Python has a very similar interface to multiprocessing. It's pretty easy to transfer your multiprocessing solutions from a single multi-core machine to multi-machines setup. Parallel Python has few dependencies and is easy to configure for research work on a local cluster. It is not very powerful and lacks communication mechanisms, but for sending out embracingly parallel jobs to a small local cluster, it is very easy to use. And the great thing is that Python has provided us a specific module for this purpose named PP, stands for Parallel Python. You can install it using a very simple command, pip install pp. There are three main things in Parallel Python. First of all, of course we need a task to execute. Then we have a client to submit our task to Parallel Python server. And finally, we have a parallel Python server to execute the tasks in a parallel way. Let's try to calculate pi using the Monte Carlo method. This method consists of drawing on a canvas a square with an inner circle. We then generate a large number of random points within the square and count how many fall in the enclosed circle. This calculation can be done in a parallel way using Parallel Python. Let's try to implement it instead of just theoretical explanations. So the very first thing is that we have to install this module. If you are working with Python 2.7, you can directly install it by using pip install pp. Although the Python 2 is retired now, of course you should upgrade to Python 3. For Python 3, we have to download a specific version of this module and build it on our system. You will find the link in the description below. Just log on to that link and download the zip file for version 1.6.4.4 and unzip it in your project root directory. Then you have to log on to this folder from your terminal and run the command python setup.py install. It will install that module in your virtual environment or on your system and we are good to go. Okay, that's great. Let's try to calculate pi using that. So I will import random time and parallel Python module and set the number of estimates to 100 millions. This is the scientific notation for number 100 millions. Then I will define a function named pi underscore calculation and pass the number of estimates. Then I'll create random coordinates and check their position if it's inside the circle or not and increment the number of trials to count it. And finally, I'll return the number of trials in that circle for pi calculation. Then inside the main, I'll set the number of processes to 4. You can set according to your system. And then I'll create the parallel Python server and pass the number of CPUs. Now, let's print a simple statement to ensure that the server has been started. Then I'll get the total number of trials per process by multiplying the estimates and the number of processors and set the starting time. To save the jobs, I'll create a list for jobs and we will submit the job to the parallel Python server with the pi underscore calculation function and input arguments. By looping through the total number of trials and append each job to the jobs list. Then outside of this loop, we will run the job for each job blocks until the result is ready. And we can also calculate the amount of work by adding the total number of trials per process. Now, to calculate the value of pi, 
we have to multiply the total numbers in unit circle with 4 and divide by the number of estimates and then the number of processes. And finally, I'll get to the ending time and calculate the delta. You can see the result here. Great. That's how parallel Python works to execute parallel tasks. Let's try to explore the second option to implement clustering in Python, and that's Celery. Celery is one of the most popular background job managers in Python world. Celery is compatible with several message brokers like RabbitMQ or Radis and can act as both producer and consumer. In this video, we are going to use the RabbitMQ as the message broker for Celery. So first of all, we have to install RabbitMQ on our system. You can install it by using the Homebrew if you are on a Mac, by using apt-get if you are on a Linux, and by using Choco if you are on Windows. So I will install it by using Homebrew on my Mac by running the command brew install rabbitmq in my terminal. If you're running this command for the first time, it will take a while. But if you already ran this command, it will be so quick. That's great. After its installation, we have to export its part like this. So we will be able to access its command globally. Mostly you just need to change the version here. Now we are good to go. We just need to restart the terminal and run the command rabbitmq-server. It starts the rabbitmq server which can be accessed at localhost colon 15672. Default credentials are guest, guest for username and password respectively. Awesome. Now let's try to install Celery. It's just like to install any Python package using pip install Celery. Great. There are three components of Celery. We have the code passed by the user's process to the Celery client API. And then it will pass to the third party broker, which is RabbitMQ in our case. And then it will pass to the Celery worker node for execution and generate the result. I'm going to calculate the pi once again, but using a different algorithm and try using the Celery for its execution. So first, we have to import the salary as from salary import salary. Then I will create one of its instance as app equal to salary and I'll pass tasks to use the task registry. Then after that, I'll pass the broker as amqp colon double slash localhost double slash because we are using localhost for rabbitmq server. After that, I'll create a function named pi underscore calculation and I will put the code for pi calculation. And at this stage, we have to import decimal and get context from decimal. Okay, so we are done with our function. But this is still a regular Python function. To make it a salary task, we have to pass the task decorator. So I will say at app.task. That's great. Now let's see it in action. So first of all, I have to start the rabbitmq server on my terminal as rabbitmq-server. Then we have to run the salary task by the command as salary minus a. Then you have to put the name of your file worker minus l info to get the info level logs minus q salary. But also make sure that you are inside the right directory. Great. You can see our task is running, but where the output? Let me open a new terminal and log on to that directory. Now, inside the Python shell, I'll import everything from my pi salary. And then I will call pi underscore calculation function in a different way as pi underscore calculation dot delay. So whenever we have to execute a task function, we have to call the delay method. If we have to pass any argument to our function, we will pass it to the delay method. It looks a little bit weird, but that's the way how it works. Awesome. So if we come back to our salary task, you can see the output here. That's how salary works. I know there's a lot to discuss more, but that's not the tutorial specific to salary. I think that's enough for this video. I hope you really enjoyed this interesting discussion. But before closing, I want to give you an advice. 
I strongly suggest that you pick a mature library with an active community behind it, supporting the same feature set that you will need and not too many additional features. The more features a library has, the more ways you will find to misconfigure it and waste your time on debugging. Simplicity is generally the right aim when dealing with clustered solutions. If you like that video, smash the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.